Our first question for tonight is about speaker wattage. People have been asking, they want to upgrade speakers and they're like, hey, how many watts of, of sound do I need to cover a 200 person wedding? Cubby, if somebody comes up to you and says, hey, I've got a thousand watts of power and I'm going to be able to cover this room. What is your first thought? I it's, I don't sometimes I don't think it's uh, the water as much. I think it's more as the coverage. Where can you put it to make sure it goes out as well as as uh, um, as well as it could be received? Uh, make sure the spray is you know the back and forth to the left. But I'm uh, how besides what is what's the size of the room? How many guests we got coming? It's kind of kind of a vague question. So I'm going to pass the day in. My my response was going to be Tuesday night with Ben so it's tomorrow night. What are we answering this yeah. question for tonight? What are you wattage? Um, things, but, yeah. <laughs> but but in, in all seriousness, like the the wattage exactly as Cubby was starting to say, the wattage is not a, a true indication of the sound. I mean, for a while there, speaker companies were like, "We've got a thousand watts of power. Here's a speaker with two thousand watts," and, and it was just like it was this race to put some number on the thing. Um, and when it came down to it, the question really became the power consumption and what it was using. The wattage doesn't mean that it's going to be louder. Um, so the, the things that you really want to look for when you're looking at the speakers and you're trying to compare the different ones is, you know, most speaker lines have different tiers within the, within their systems. So you have an idea of what might be a better version of the speaker, but then you're also looking for, you're looking for decibel output. Like what's that sound pressure? How loud is it going to be? Right. And that's going to be some of the things that you're going to want to have. Also, you might have something that's really loud and it's got a 10 inch sub or you've got something else that's really loud and it's got a 15 inch sub. Well, do you want them to be able to feel it or do you want them to be able to hear it? And that's kind of just the, the difference between the two. Obviously, the feeling would be the 15. So, you know, things like that are really going to be the things that play into that decision way more than wattage ever will. In fact, I, I've heard it one time. You know, if you could have a 1500 watt speaker or a thousand watt speaker, the thousand watt speakers just may be more efficient if it's producing the same level of sound. Wow. That was, I felt like Ben for a second. Yeah, you did. You did. Well. Yeah, you channeled, you channeled. Ben, a couple of, I, I spent you, one week with them last week and suddenly. Yeah, exactly. I can just now, I'm going to just filter all questions to Dan when it comes to gear. <laughs> It'll be great. Uh, the, the word you missed there, the, the letters you missed is SPL, which is the measurement yeah. of sound pressure with one watt. Basically, it's a measurement at one watt of, of input power, and then that's at one meter, and that's the, the SPL or the volume, and we'll call it, uh, that you're getting out of that speaker. The more efficient speaker will have a higher SPL rating, and then you have a max SPL rating, which generally with most, most speaker companies is... Uh, calculated. It's not a real thing because as you go from that first efficient SPL where it's a little higher reading, every time you double the power going into it, you're bumping that that up three three additional uh, dB on the SPL. So that you can calculate what that should be. In reality, if you've seen some of my speaker tests that I've done out here where I've had 12 inch or 15 inch cabinets outside and we're testing those, uh, we're we're getting at that distance, I can get 115, maybe 120 if I'm really uh, lucky, a decibel reading. But they're they're designed or they're tested or, or, or projected to be like 125 or 130. Yes, it is possible, I suppose, to get that in the right situation, but I've got, I'm testing them out here in the driveway. Now, does that mean that that doesn't give you enough sound pressure for a dance floor? Well, if we flash back to Ben Stowe, he talked about if I'm at 105 decibel on a dance floor, that's pretty loud. That's that's uncomfortably loud, and I think that's uh, that's that's kind of a, a big thing that a lot of DJs probably don't pay attention to, is that you want to have the ability to go up, but you don't have to be up all the time. Kevin, I liked uh, that you started out talking about dispersion when it came to coverage of the room. That's something that really gets overlooked tremendously, and that that if you've ever looked at uh, the the Evolve fifties, they have those little wave guides on the speakers. It isn't just the little cones. There's these little plasticky things in front of that. And what those plasticky things are doing is they're helping to expand a full sound to the left and right and having that wider dispersion. The little mini arrays have a wider dispersion to begin with. And then with that waveguide, it even gives it a little bit more clarity on those extremes, which is really kind of a, an important thing when you're talking about covering a room. And then, of course, it fits into what Dan was saying, is that if you've got a small sub, you're not going to have as much feel of the bass. It may be, you might be able to hear it, but a 12 inch on your, your mini array is going to have less thump feel than a 15 inch or an 18 inch. 
you get back to what do I really need for the type of events I do? Do I need to have a big thump or is a a, a little bit of a thump in the middle of our dance floor, as Brian Red likes to talk about, I have the thump right in front in the middle of my dance floor, the sweet spot of the dance floor. And then after that, it's a nice sound quality around the room where people can talk and engage. Getting the proper gear, I think, is huge in in that world. Uh, Day and I mentions 100 decibel is plenty loud at a wedding. Yeah, if you can, with most speakers, if you're at 115 in front of them and then you continue to go back and back and back, by the time you're at the other end of the dance floor, the other side, you're at 100 decibels, you've got speakers that are doing the job, uh, doing it, I, I would perceive, very, very well. So it's not wattage. It's the speaker SPL, the efficiency. The dispersion is important. This, you know, your ultimate outcome, it all fits together. 